Good morning, friends, and welcome to our worship e-service this morning. I'm glad that you've chosen to join us as we join together as brothers and sisters in Christ in this time of worship as we gather as the children of God. Just a note on that, as we gather in this moment, I want to invite you to worship as you feel comfortable. If you want to stand and sing the, the words to God, you're more than welcome to do so. They will be on the screen. I also want to invite you, if you want to sit quietly and reflectively and read the words, you're more than welcome to do that. As long as we engage in a moment of worship with God, as we gather in this time through this e-service as well. As we do, we will be singing together in the way we feel comfortable. I will offer up my life. Friends, let us worship God as we gather in this moment. Good morning and welcome again, friends, to our worship e-service. I'm glad that you've joined us as we worship together in this space as well. Friends, if you're new and you're not quite sure who I am, my name is Raymond. I'm a Methodist minister serving in the Mahale Circuit of the Methodist Church of Southern Africa. And I want to invite you to participate in this time of worship as you feel comfortable this morning. Welcome. Friends, as we join as a community of faith in this moment, and as become our custom at this time, we, we light a candle to remind us of the presence of Christ. So I want to invite you to grab your candle, something to light it with. And as we light our candles together in this moment, we're reminded that the light of Christ shines into the darkness of our world. That though the world has not understood it and the darkness has tried to overcome it, it has never succeeded and it never will. With that in mind, we come to God in the moment of prayer. Please know that during this time of prayer, there will be moments of quiet in which I invite you to lift up your prayers to God as well. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise that you are the one who has created all things. That you are the one who continues to recreate us as you bring us back from the space of sin and death that we found ourselves in. That you've made a way for us to come back into relationship with you. And Father, we thank you for all that you have done and continue to do in our lives. Friends, I want to invite you in the moment of quiet 
to lift up your praise of thanksgiving to God in this time. Lift up your praise, friends. So we thank and praise your mighty God. We thank you for all you have done and continue to do in our lives. But we also acknowledge that we are sinners, that we fall short in the things that we do, the things that we say, and even the things that we think at times. That, Father, we have not loved you and others as we should, and we owe you a debt of love and others as well. So friends, I want to invite you in the moment of quiet to lift up your prayers of confession of sin to God. Friends, lift up your prayers now. Friends, as we lift up our prayers of confession, we hear the words of grace. Your sins are forgiven. Go and sin no more. As you receive these words of grace, almighty God, we, we ask that you would help us. Strengthen us in the journey away from sin and back to you. As we seek to repent of these sins and these areas of our lives in which we so easily get ensnared and entangled in sin. Strengthen us, we pray, through your Holy Spirit, because we can't do this ourselves. Strengthen us and heal us as only you can. Recreate us into who you want us to be in your image. For we ask this in your precious name, Jesus. We pray, Almighty God, that you would guide and direct us in this time of worship as we come to you with all of who we are. For you are worthy of all praise, honor, and thanks. We ask this in Jesus' name, now and always. Amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you. And I hear you saying, and also with you, Raymond. Friends, as we've found forgiveness with God, we, we become peacemakers in the spaces and places we find ourselves as well. As we pass that peace on to the world around us, our family, our friends, the world in general, as we seek to make peace in those places, I want to invite you to, to live out that love of God and neighbor through making peace in those moments and times. So friends, the peace of the Lord be with you and with all of those who see us and know Christ is in us as well. Friends, as we gather as a community of faith in this time, we, we share our shared faith as we say together the kingdom prayer, the, the Lord's prayer, the prayer that Jesus taught us. Now I'm going to be praying in English and I want to invite you to pray with me whichever language is easiest upon your tongue. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Friends, as we continue to worship God in this moment, I want to invite you to worship as we, we sing together in whichever way we find most comfortable at this time. Here I am. Luan, music team, over to you guys.
covered by the blood of the Friends, as we come to our notices today, our notices are found within the video description of this video as found on YouTube and have been made available through our WhatsApp info groups and on our Facebook pages. And I want to invite you to take a moment to read through our notices so that you are aware of what's taking place in our communities of faith at this time. There are two that I'd like to highlight for your attention, and they both revolve around next week in terms of not this coming week, but Holy Week, Good Friday, and Easter Resurrection Sunday services. Just a reminder that we will be having our regular Sunday services next week, Sunday, the 28th of March, as we come and we remember Palm Sunday as we come in that space as well. I am in the process of having cross, Palm Crosses made up and we'll be able to have some available at our church sites. Now, I'm quite aware that there are some people who will not be joining us 
for our Sunday services this coming Sunday. And I'd like to invite you, if you're not going to be able to participate at one of our in-person worship services that this coming Sunday, to come and to make arrangements to collect a palm cross from our church sites. They will be available from Thursday and Friday. And I would like to invite you to make arrangements with myself or one of the stewards there to collect a palm cross so that you can participate in our online service with your palm cross as well. That's the first notice is about palm crosses and next week Sunday, Palm Sunday. The next is about our Holy Week services, our Good Friday services and our Easter Resurrection Sunday service. I'm in the process of finalizing uh, the Holy Week plan, and I will be making that available later this coming week. So please do keep an eye out for it. We are looking to have Holy Week evening services. They will be combined services at Newtable Methodist Church, as well as at Princess Methodist Church. There will be some evening services there as well. With Good Friday in mind, I'm just finalizing the program about what that will look like. But our Easter Resurrection Sunday services will be at our normal Sunday service times. That is 7.45 at Krugersdorp Methodist Church, 9.30 at Newtable Methodist Church, and 9.30 at Princess Methodist Churches. Our 11 o'clock services are invited to join the circuit service, which will be taking place and will be advised as we go along as well. So friends, I look forward to journeying with you as we journey through this very special time of the year, from Palm Sunday through Holy Week, as well as through the cross of Good Friday and the empty tomb of Resurrection Sunday. With that in mind, we, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank those who continue to give so generously into the life of our community of faith at this time. Thank you. As you give of your tithes and offerings to, the, to God, the church receives it and uses it for the furtherment of God's kingdom to meet the needs of, of the expenses of ministry as well as of mission as we seek to reach out in love to the world around us through both our societies, our circuit, our synod and connectional structures during this time in which we need to be a light of hope to the world around us by taking the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations for healing and for transformation. With that in mind, we come to a word of prayer. Before I get there, if you are joining us today, friends, and you're not from a community of faith, welcome again. I would like to encourage you, if you are part of a community of faith, to give your tithes and offerings into your community of faith. If you're not and you'd like to give into ours as well, please do find the banking details that are available in our notices. And I'd like to encourage you to give electronically or in person at one of our in-person services in that space as well. With that in mind, we come to a word of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-loving God, we lift up our lives and all of who we are to you. Because it's only in your hands that we come into a moment of re realizing that you are a loving and holy God. That you, Father, are the one who has made a way for us to come back into a relationship with you. But not just to come back, but to live in that space of relationship. And we thank you that you are the one who continually grows us, nurtures us and strengthens us. So as we give up our tithes, our offerings, we ask that you'd receive it as our love gift for you, Almighty God. For the furtherment of your kingdom, for the gospel of Jesus Christ to, to be preached, for the sustaining of the ministry that grows us and strengthens us in the knowledge of who you are in relationship with you. As well as in mission to the world as we seek to reach out in that love to others who are in need at this time. So, Father, receive our giving. Give those who have ministered wisdom, guiding and directing. And let us be your church as we seek to reach out for healing and transformation to a, he to a, to a hurting and vulnerable world, that we may bring healing and transformation through your guiding and directing. So guide us now, we pray. Be with us as we seek to be your church. We ask us through Jesus Christ, our Lord, now and always. Amen. Friends, as we prepare ourselves to receive the word of God today, we lift up our hearts and worship God as we sing together, Be still for the presence of the Lord.
Friends, as we come to the Word of God today, I want to invite you, if you have a Bible nearby, to grab your Bible and to open it with me to our readings. Our first reading is from the Old Testament prophet Jeremiah, and I'm reading Jeremiah 31, verses 31 to 34. And our Gospel reading today will be from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 20 to 33. I want to invite you to open your Bible and just to to follow with me if you have a Bible nearby. If you don't, don't stress. I am going to put the words on the screen because our readings are going to form part of our sermon text as we go through the sermon today. With that in mind, let's come to a word of prayer. Father, as we prepare our hearts to receive your word, speak into our lives. Open our minds to understand and our hearts to receive what you have to say to us through your word today. So minister to us, guide and direct us and empower us to to live out what it means to be your people as we journey through the season of Lent towards the cross of Good Friday and the empty tomb of Easter. Father, guide us, we pray. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each and every one of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer, Jesus Christ, our Lord, now and always. Amen. So friends, as we come to the Word of God today, we continue our Lenten journey. As we continue to prepare ourselves spiritually for the journey from Palm Sunday, which is next Sunday, through the events of Holy Week to the cross of Good Friday and the empty tomb and risen Christ of Resurrection Easter Sunday. Now, if we stop and take a look at each of these events from Palm Sunday through Holy Week, the cross of Good Friday and the empty tomb of Easter Sunday, it's a journey of love, a love journey that that we receive, a love that is given undeservedly to us by God, graciously lavishing God's love upon us as the children of God. 
So as we come with that in mind, we come and we receive what God has for us. A loving God who, who reaches out to us in this moment and time. So this brings us to our, our scripture reading from Jeremiah 31, verses 31 to 34. I'm going to put the words on the screen. There they are. And I'm going to invite you to follow with me as I read through them. Look, the days are coming. This is the Lord's declaration. When I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. This one will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors. On the day I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant that they broke, even though I am their master, the Lord's declaration. Instead, this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, the Lord's declaration. I will put my teaching within them and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will one teach his brother, his neighbor or his brother saying, Know the Lord, for they will all know me from the least to the greatest of them. This is the Lord's declaration, for I will forgive their iniquity and never again remember their sin. So friends, in our scripture reading from Jeremiah 31, we find a promise from the Lord God sent through the mouth of the prophet Jeremiah about 2,600 years ago, which speaks to us just as clearly and profoundly as it did to the children of Israel held in captivity in Babylon many, many, many generations ago. It's a prophecy from God of a future establishment of the, the new covenant with the people of God, both the kingdoms of Israel and of Judah, both Israel and the northern kingdom of Judah. It is in the shadow of God wanting to, to form this new covenant that we get our reading from the Gospel of John, from John 12, verses 20 to 33, which reads as follows. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Everyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that were there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. Friends, our reading from the Gospel of John starts just after the triumphal entry of Jesus entering into Jerusalem. Something that I mentioned earlier that we will celebrate next week Sunday at Palm Sunday. It's in this moment that John tells us that, that among those coming to celebrate the Passover feast was some Greeks. There were some Greeks amongst those who came to worship in that moment. Now many assume that that these were Greeks who had become Jewish converts and were there at the temple and the triumphal entry into the temple and into the temple spaces. And as Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a young donkey, he was given a hero's welcome. Friends, these Greek Jews come to Philip, who was from Bethsaida and perhaps looked like them. Someone who, who was perhaps approachable because he looked familiar. A disciple of Jesus. And asks Philip 
that they want to see Jesus. Friends, this is a sign that Jesus' time of preparation is over. Jesus receives it and, and he says, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. My friends, this statement of Jesus is, is seen by many biblical scholars as the, the turning point in the Gospel of John. A turning point with, with the, the Greek Jewish converts coming, seeking Jesus. And the religious authorities in Jerusalem refusing to accept Jesus. Friends, do you see the irony of that? The Greek Jewish converts, those who are still finding their feet in Judaism, come seeking Jesus. Perhaps referred to as second class Jews, coming seeking Jesus. Whereas the religious authorities in Jerusalem refuse to accept Jesus for who he is. It is a time of turning from preparation to fulfillment of purpose. A turning from preparing to empowering the disciples to take over from Jesus. Friends, as we journey through the remainder of the season of Lent and approach Easter, we need to stop and ask ourselves a very serious question. Are we just going through the motions? Or are we truly seeking Jesus, like the Greeks did? Are we ready to turn from preparation to participation? I want to ask that again, friends. Are we ready to turn from preparation to participation? From thinking about and preparing to do to actually being present in the moment, participating in the moments that lie ahead in the sacred journey from Palm Sunday through Holy Week to the cross of Good Friday and the empty tomb of Resurrection Sunday and encountering afresh the risen Christ. So what is this hour? After Jesus said, the, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified, Jesus has two responses to the hour having come. Firstly, he teaches the disciples and the crowd with him about what this hour is. Now, he does this through a parable in which he, he speaks about a kernel of wheat that must die to produce many seeds. It needs to be sacrificed, buried in the ground to gain a larger crop. That's the first. Now, the one I've put on the screen now is the, is the second, which reads as follows. Now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. Friends, for me, this is a crucial response. As it shows the very human side of Jesus. That Jesus, knowing what lay ahead, had reservations about taking up the suffering of the cross. A side of Jesus which lets us know that God knows what it's like to be human. But Jesus accepted what needed to be done and sets himself going to fulfill it for God's glory. He even says, he goes on to say in verse 32, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Now, John adds a bit of a comment here when he says, he said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. Friends, the hour that Jesus faced was the cross. In that he was going to give up his life and die. He was going to bring the seed and needed to be the seed that was planted for our salvation. Through Jesus' sacrifice upon the cross, our salvation was made possible. Jesus gave up his life as a seed to produce the seeds of, of your, my, and all people's salvation, friends. This is the key to the establishment of the promise of the new covenant, which we hear about in Jeremiah 31. The question is, have we accepted that, that love gift that God gives to us? The gift of salvation, of reconciliation with God, of forgiveness with God, with God having paid the price. So what is our response, friends? 
How do we respond to this, this gift of love, this, this message of, of God's love for us? I want to suggest that as we continue the journey towards Easter, let us become active participants in the journey and not just go through the motions yet again. I know we find ourselves in very odd and difficult circumstances at this time of national lockdown, of coronavirus and fears and concerns that have gripped us for almost the, almost the entire year now, if not longer. We come in this moment of, of needing to examine afresh what this means for us. As we come to remember what Christ has done for us and the price he paid for us. Christ that has brought about the new covenant of God, a new space of relationship and righteousness with God. What God, and that God knows what it means to be human and how we struggle. God knows, friends, what it means to be human in that moment as well. I want to share with you a paraphrased reading of Jeremiah 31. I'm reading very much from Jeremiah 31, and it reads as follows. And I want you to hear these words, friends. Perhaps they, they speak to you in the space in which you find yourselves as, they, as they've spoken to me. No matter what you're going through, no matter how much it hurts or how difficult it is to imagine a future with hope, I promise you, it will get better one day. And you are not alone. I am with you to the end of the age. So friends, I want to invite you in whatever time you, you set aside to be with God, for, for whatever time you make to be with God in this week, whether it's quiet time or prayer time, a few moments, just, just setting apart just to be with God. I would like to invite you in that moment to spend time reflecting on, am I simply going through the motions of Lent and preparing for Easter again? Or am I ready to actively participate in the journey with Christ. You got it? I think it's a moment in which we need to ask the Holy Spirit to, to help us become more fully involved in the journey of God's love shown to us through every moment of Holy Week, Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday. Are we ready to participate that? Are we ready to change gears and become actively involved? Because the hour has come for us to move from preparation to participation in this process. With that in mind, let us come and pray. Father, we give you thanks and praise that you are with us, that your grace surrounds us, and that in this moment of preparation, we move from preparation to participation. As we prepare ourselves for, for through the week for what lies ahead, from Palm Sunday and the Hosannas of Palm Sunday save us, save us of Palm Sunday through the events of Holy Week to the cross of Good Friday and the death of Christ afresh to the empty tomb to the surprise and the resurrection life the transformation life that we encounter on Easter Resurrection Sunday help us Father not to just prepare and go through the motions yet again, but to actively participate. Holy Spirit, enable us to participate, to go beyond where we find ourselves, to engage with you and your Spirit's guiding. For we ask this in your precious name, Jesus. Help us to know what to take from this sermon today, that we may live it out in our lives in every moment and situation. For we ask this in your name, Jesus. Now and always. Amen. Friends, as we respond to the word of God today, we, we come and we lift up our hearts in praise of God as we sing together beautiful beyond description.
majesty and throne above, and I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Only God to whom all praise is due. I stand in awe of you. You are beautiful beyond description. So friends, as we come to an end of our time of service today, I want to encourage you to know that God is with you. As we continue our Lenten journey towards Palm Sunday next week, as we journey through this week, know that God goes with you in the times in which we prepare our hearts to receive afresh the risen, resurrected Christ. Friends, as we come to an end of our time, we we bless each other with what's known as the benediction. And I want to encourage you to say the words that are now on the screen with me, as we bless each other with these words. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. Friends, be safe and be blessed and know that God is with you now and always. Amen.